Good morning. I have a few announcements here this morning, and you can certainly follow along in your bulletins. Um, on the back, beneath the gospel lesson, we have a little note about our upcoming congregational meeting. And we will still be having our congregational meeting. It will take place on January 24th after worship. There will be no meal because of, well, obvious reasons. And it will take place here in the sanctuary. Again, for obvious reasons. We can space out better here. And by space out, you know what I mean. Not drift off into no, not land, but spread out and uh, have our meeting. <clears throat> there is a letter being sent to you. It was put in the mail Thursday, so people in Mertztown should get it by the end of January. Um, and uh, that gives you some more information. There was no comment about our local post office. They're great, they're great. But it's been a little bit slow lately, right? So it'll get to you. Reminder, if you haven't already, please pick up your church envelopes, which are in St. Paul's Center. The, there is a new flower chart on the wall out here in the Northex. Please consider signing up to um, sponsor flowers or one week or two weeks or six weeks um, during this year. And any of you at home, please do not hesitate to call into the church office. Um, we will certainly um, be able to set you up with a, a flower sponsorship for the day of your choice. And again, it's in the bulletin. Um, I think this week I may have forgotten to email the bulletin out, so my apologies. I will make sure that in, in a retroactive way it gets up there, and uh, we'll, we'll try to be a little bit more perfected for next week. Are there any other announcements from the gathered congregation? We will soon have more lessons for February as well. So if you would like to read and you want to pick a date a while, you may certainly see my wife. We, we know you want to read because you're reading today, right? Yeah, good. Seeing that there are no other announcements, we begin our worship on page 211. We gather together, brothers and sisters, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Please rise. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Holy God, creator of light and giver of goodness, your voice moves over the waters. Immerse us in your grace and transform us by your spirit that we may follow after your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. A 
reading from Genesis. And God said, let there be an expanse in the, in the midst of the waters and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the expanse and separated the waters that were under the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse. And it was so, and God called the expanse heaven. And there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. I will establish your line forever and preserve your throne for all generations. The heavens praise your wonders, O Lord and your faithfulness in the assembly of the Holy Ones. For who in the skies can be compared to the Lord, who is like the Lord among the gods? A God who is feared in the council of the Holy Ones, great and awesome to those all around. Who is like you, Lord, God of hosts? O oh, mighty Lord, your faithfulness is all around. A reading from Colossians. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brothers in Christ at Colossae, grace to you and peace from God our Father. We always thank God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ when we pray for you since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints. Because of the hope laid up for, your, for you in heaven, of this you have heard before in the word of the, in the word of The truth in the 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 truth the the gospel, which has come to you as indeed indeed in the whole world, it is bearing fruit and increasing, as it also does among you since the day you. <coughs> servant he is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf and has made known 
to his glorious might for all endurance and patience, patience, with joy giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel for this day comes from the book of St. John, the third chapter. Now a discussion arose between some of John's disciples and a Jew over purification. And they came to John and said to him, Rabbi, he who was with you across the Jordan, to whom you bore witness, look, he is baptizing and all are going to him. John answered, a person cannot receive even one thing unless it is given him from heaven. You yourselves bear me witness that I said, I am not the Christ, but I have been sent before him. The one who has the bride is the bridegroom. The friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices greatly at the bridegroom's voice. Therefore, this joy of mine is now complete. He must increase but I must decrease. He who comes from above is above all. He who is of the earth belongs to the earth and speaks in an earthly way. He who comes from heaven is above all. He bears witness to what he has seen and heard, yet no one receives his testimony. Whoever receives his testimony sets his seal to this, that God is true. For he whom God has sent utters the words of God, for he gives the Spirit without measure. The Father loves the Son and has given all things into his hand. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever does not obey the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God remains upon him. This is the gospel of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. You may be seated. So we began last week a look at creation. You can just stay right there, I'll ask you. First things first, how easy was that to read with annoying sisters? Not easy at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you understand how it might be difficult to preach when people are kind of talking the whole time? They're not bugging me. Okay. Yeah, no, that's because they left. Oh, well. It's kind of hard to keep focused. It really is. But today's lesson that comes from Genesis is a continuation of the creation story. Today is the second day. The day when God separates and creates heaven and the earth. Or more specifically, he creates and places heaven above. Let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters. And let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the expanse and separated the waters that were under the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse. And it was so, and God called the expanse heaven. And there was evening, and there was morning the second day. 
We look at that again and we wonder. Our imaginations begin to run a little bit more wild than they did last week when we had the creation of night and day of light and, well, the separation of light from darkness. Today is just this language of an expanse. An expanse to us is something wide open, something clear of obstacles. Well, at least clear of the kind of obstacles we think of when we associate that word with, well, mountain ranges or deep valleys. An expanse in my mind is something that is just, it goes on seemingly forever and ever and ever. In my mind, for whatever reason, I, I think of an expanse as something as being wide and maybe even flat, something that you could see from one end to, well, somewhere within it. When I stood beside Lake Erie or Lake Ontario, when I stood by the, the Atlantic Ocean or the Pacific Ocean and looked out and saw nothing but, in my mind, an expanse, something beyond anything we could measure. It just went on forever and ever. I could see the horizon, but I couldn't see the other shore. It brings up this word, well, our sense of imagination. We can imagine what's out there, even when we may not know. This expanse, this wide open area, this massive place called heaven lies between the waters that are above and the waters that are below. Now in ancient times, in many different cultures, this idea of waters in the sky is prevalent for looking up from where we stand here on earth. Space looks like nothing other than an expanse that we cannot see to the other shore. It reminded many cultures of looking out upon a great lake or an ocean. They looked out and it was flat as far as they could see. There was nothing beyond. They felt as if you went to that point, you'd fall right off the edge of the earth. It wouldn't be there anymore. There's nothing. Well, when we look out into space, we have that same emotion. We have that same feeling. Or at least we would have if we were hanging around with God on the second day. There were no stars yet. Perhaps the sun and the moon, but that's not really clear. It draws us into a question about what last week was really all about, this light and this darkness, because here on day two, we don't have any stars yet. We have nothing in the sky. In fact, we don't even have sky. We just have immensity. We have an expanse of eternity. Heaven now exists, the dwelling place of the Father, the dwelling place of the Son, of the Spirit coming out upon the waters. Let it separate the waters from the waters, and the Spirit then flows across the waters, across everything. It's like the canvas has been laid out. God's paintbrushes are filled, saturated with color, and ready to design. The canvas is spread. And everything else, separated by heaven. Now, I don't know what's on the other side of the expanse. We don't hear about that in the Bible. Or at least not in the way that we would like to. At this point, we may have a little bit more clarity on day three and four. But as of right now, we have no clue what is above heaven or beyond the expanse named heaven. But we do know what's below. We, we are below. The earth, it is below. And not below in any kind of negative way, separated from heaven. God never intended for this world and our creation here to be in a state of brokenness. God told us not to eat of that fruit from that tree, but we did anyway. God created with the intent that this realm would be perfect, even in its separation from heaven. 
It would be our realm, a realm where we lived eternal. God called the expanse heaven, and what was below it and what was above it were separated. I like to think, as I meditate upon this lesson, that what was separated was darkness and light. That we are children of light, we who believe, and we are separated from the darkness. And the darkness cannot break through the expanse called heaven. And at the end of the day, if we believe and we inherit that kingdom of heaven, this great expanse, then there is nothing that darkness can do to us. It's already been laid out. We are to be separated from that. We are to be in the light. The Apostle Paul speaks to us of how we are to live in this life with a hope, with a joy that is wrapped up, laid up, existing in heaven, in this expanse, in this eternal life of blessing and joy in God's kingdom. That is how we're to live here in this realm in this world, we are to live knowing that our joy, our peace, our passion, our love, everything that we hope for is in the expanse. It sounds kind of funny, it sounds kind of silly, but when we think of that expanse as heaven, we have an entirely different opinion. A realm of peace and love with God, our Father, our Son, His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and and probably our sons and daughters too, quite literally. But in that realm that God has created from the beginnings of the earth, we have everything, our entire treasure. Hope. Live life with a hope that is laid up for you in heaven, St. Paul speaks. Of this you have heard before in the word of the truth which has come to you, the good news, as indeed in the whole world it is bearing fruit and increasing. God's promise of life everlasting from Genesis to Jesus Christ crucified, died and buried is a good news message of life, true life. And all who believe have it. Whoever receives the testimony of Christ sets his seal to this, that God is true. For all that God speaks is true. It is not only a promise that we hear, but a promise that we know has been fulfilled and will be fulfilled in we who believe. We trust and know that through our baptisms, we have been given the word. So what do we do with it? Is knowledge of the creation of heaven enough for us? Or do we need more? Is seeing the world through the lens of Genesis, a knowledge that God has laid out everything for us from the very beginning, is that knowledge enough to move us to proclaiming the joy, the hope, and the love of Christ Jesus our Lord? Do we need more? And if so, what is it that we need? Do we need to make it to at least day three? or day four, or day seven of the creation in order to fully accept that this great and incredible existence was created by someone or something greater than we? What is it that we need? What is it that we're looking for? What is it that holds us back from proclaiming the truth of Christ? Certainly in this day and age, we have fear. We have doubts. We have been told again and again and again that to proclaim Christ is to do nothing other than offend everyone else who doesn't believe in him. Well, I don't know about any of you, but I don't care. My goal is not to offend, but if the word of God offends, then so be it. 
God has shown me in this day of creation, day two, that there's something greater and it awaits us. There is something more incredible and it is there just sitting. It's for the taking. It really is. It's as simple as that. Believe and trust in God and you will inherit everlasting life. What do we really have to be afraid of? I can think about the expanse. I can think about the waters above and the waters below. I can get a little nervous at trying to imagine what eternity really is. Or infinite, well, infinite places. But at the end of the day, this brings me excitement. It brings out that sense of exploration. A sense of joy that God has created for us from day one, a home for all time. It's pretty cool. God called the expanse heaven, and there was evening, and there was morning the second day. Let us pray. Gracious God, you speak to us in the words of Colossians through the mouth of St. Paul that you have delivered us from the domain of darkness above and that you will transfer us from this life of light into the kingdom of pure light, into the kingdom of his beloved Son, we shall go. It is in this expanse, in the kingdom of heaven, that we have redemption and the forgiveness of sins. Help us to rejoice, O Lord, in this life that life is everlasting, that you have prepared for us an eternal home. Gracious God, strengthen us to proclaim the truth of your love and the powerful gospel good news message that all who believe in you shall not perish but shall have everlasting life. Let our lips not be bound. Let us go forth in peace and joy to proclaim your word to all the world, a world in need, with love and compassion, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen.
with the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, for those in need, and for all of God's creation. Heavenly and eternal Lord, we give you thanks for your church in this world. Grant us, dear Lord, the grace and the compassion to know your word and to proclaim it in kindness to a world that so desperately needs to hear it. Help us to share your message of love and peace for all people for all of creation, from the stars up above to the smallest forms of life. Dear Lord, you sent your only begotten Son to die so that we might all live. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would grant us wisdom to love and to care for our brothers and sisters not only our brothers and sisters in Christ, in your Son, but our fellow human beings and our fellow forms of life throughout the world. Lord, we know it is a challenge. But what we pray is that you would remove any and all stumbling blocks from our path. Dear Lord, as your church, Help us to speak out against hatred and division and senseless anger that leads to broken relationships, violence, and war. There is no room, O oh Lord, in the church or in the Christian's heart for anger, hatred, violence, or any of the other broken commandments. Help us not to envy or live in greed. Gracious Father, help us to rejoice in the knowledge of all that you have made and that you have laid out for us the kingdom of heaven from the beginning. Help us to rejoice. And as your church, to teach the world that there is always a better way in loving and serving you, we might love and serve one another. Lord, in your mercy, gracious and everlasting God, we look around us and all we see is beauty. At least, Lord, the works of your hand are beautiful. At times, we as your creation blur creation. Lord, we as your creation sometimes destroy creation. And yet, Lord, it does not take away from the fact that everything you have made is beautiful. How much more incredible must that expanse called heaven be? Lord, with excitement, with passion, we await your kingdom. Help us, O oh Lord, to have the same excitement and passion as we explore this world. Lord, in your mercy, gracious God, for the poor, the oppressed, the sick, the bereaved, and the lonely, indeed, Lord, for a world where justice is broken, help us to bless one another with simple acts of kindness, with words of power, words that cost nothing to share, words of love with one another. 
Help us, O oh Lord, to bring the true justice that you preach. A justice where divisions are unnecessary. Lord, we pray this day for the nations and those in authority. And yet, Lord, perhaps even more as we speak of heaven, we pray for that day when nations are needed no longer, when authority comes only from you, when it doesn't matter what our political or our economic or our social policies are. Dear Lord, they're irrelevant in the Christian heart, for your true peace and justice knows no boundaries, no divisions, but is for one and for all. Let us call upon your name. Let us trust in your authority. And let us help you. For dear Lord, that's all we can do is help you. You are the power. Let us help you in our lives usher your justice and peace into this world. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, we pray for all those who are in need of your healing touch, those who suffer in body, mind, and spirit. And Lord, there is a long list, for each and every one of your people suffers in one way or another. And if it not be in body, in mind, or in spirit, it is certainly in heart. It is hard, dear Lord, not to be angry, not to be upset, not to worry and not to fear in a world that is being ravaged by the illness of COVID-19. And yet, Lord, we must. We must rise above. And so we pray for each other, for the healing of the human heart and for the healing of body. We lift up Aiden and Bob, Brody, Cookie and Craig, Cynthia, Dale and Donald, Dorothy, Gloria and E. George, Greta, Jim and Joyce, Ernest, Kelly, Kenneth and Kathleen. We pray for Larry, Layla and Kevin, Linda, Mary and Nicholas, for Olive, Pamela and Patty, for Carolyn, Elena and Corey, for Quinn and Richard, Robert, Rose and Shana, for Scott, Shirley and Vincent, for Travis and George, for the family and friends of Zach, for the family and friends of Nancy, for the family and friends of Earl, the family and friends of Evelyn, and the family and friends of Luther. We pray for all imprisoned peoples. We pray for all unborn children as well as parents preparing for childbirth. We pray for those grieving the loss of a pregnancy. We pray for our military personnel our law enforcement personnel, and others who work each and every day for our safety, whether they be around the world or here at home. We pray for their families, and truly, once again, we look to one another with love and kindness, and we pray for our neighbor. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, most gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Let us share the sign of peace that we may. Peace, Nancy. As we show our sign of peace to one another. I encourage you to continue meditating on those ways in which we might give back. And especially, perhaps today, as we hear about the creation of heaven, and we've certainly all thought about heaven and what heaven is throughout our Christian lives, today we hear that it is absolutely a place. And unlike what Belinda Carlisle said, it is not a place on earth. It's the expanse in between the earth and whatever is beyond, the darkness perhaps. But we know heaven is real. That should help us to, to want to give more and more of what we can in this world. And you know, there is that special little kind of thing out there apparently this year. Whether we like it or not, some people have been stimulated a little bit more these last um, few months. And perhaps you want to, you know, take of your stimulation and stimulate the church. 
So if any of you got those special little you know, United States Treasury checks in the mail and you have a little extra, say 10%, no, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. Actually, I'm not kidding at all about the 10%. But I'm not saying it should all come to the church, although I think the Bible said that, Nancy, didn't it? 10% to the church? Yeah. Um, no. Hear what I'm saying. We have been blessed. And some of us have been blessed in unique and different ways this last year. Let us share of our blessings with those who are less fortunate than us, with those institutions that reach out and provide for the world a message of hope rather than a message of division. And so, yeah, I'll, I'll stand right here and say, give to the church. The political parties don't need your money anymore. I, I really don't want any more mail. I don't. I'm done with it. <laughs> but I'm still getting it. So don't send them your money right now. Send it to the church. It's kind of a joke, but kind of serious. God bless you all. And we meditate now to the offertory. Please rise.
O God of justice and love. We give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless us all now and forever. Amen. Let us go forth to love and to serve the Lord and truly to love and serve one another. Thanks be to God.